The Celestial Mandala of Service podcast accompanies you to discover the 11th constellation of the Wheel of the Zodiac that we call Aquarius, associated with the service field of concrete knowledge and science, and a capability that will characterize a deeper understanding of life in the new era. Welcome to this 11th episode of this cycle of podcasts dedicated to human service fields, And this month, in the sign of Aquarius, we'll be focusing on the field of science and how we might imagine a new way of understanding the underpinnings of our world in the new era of human life. My name is Lorraine Flower, and I'm a member of the Community of Living Ethics and your host for this podcast today. Aquarius is an air sign, and it could be called the light that ever shines in the dark. Aquarius itself is a sign of the fifth ray of concrete knowledge, science and technology. And it's from this centre of applied intelligence that Aquarius influences our life. It is connected to the circulatory system, while its polar opposite, Leo, is the ruler of the heart. The soul-centred Aquarian has learned how to be heart-centred. And it is from the heart, through her mind and social networking capabilities, that Aquarius rising is able to disseminate her inner vision for the benefit of humanity. A key focus of the soul expression of Aquarius is to those devices and processes that place as much information as possible in the hands and minds of as many people as possible. So to experiment, create the new, but stay centred in the heart, expressing the purest form of love in terms of its usefulness to society. Love which is pure and potent because it emanates from the benevolent energy of Jupiter and extends in ever more expansive circles through group orientation and group consciousness. So bringing together new, expanded and transformed concrete knowledge with the heart could lead us to a new understanding of the science underpinning our world. To help us reflect on this topic of new science, I'd like to welcome our friend Leili Kozravi, doctor, researcher and observer of the emerging insights of what was once called heretical science but which today begins to reveal itself and its evidence. Laylee will help us reflect together on the characteristics of new science. Welcome, Laylee. Thank you, dear Loren, for this opportunity to talk about science together with you. No, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And science is, is not my um, core topic. So I'm certainly hoping that we will, I will learn as we go through today as well. It's, it's not, you're going to discover, you're going to discover it is your topic too. You exactly. don't know what it is. Exactly. And this is what I hope our listeners will find that it's uh, for those who aren't naturally drawn to, to science, that it's everybody's topic. <laughs> so, so in that sense, let's get on with our first question. And I'm curious to understand more about what science means to you today. Help us to understand what this word science really means, Lely. Uh, yeah, you, uh, I would like to start a little bit about the history. You know, in the last 200 years in the scientific field, humanity has carried out a process of analysis, developing various increasingly specialized branches of science, distancing humanity and even the scientists themselves from a holistic vision of the science and especially of the life. Today, science as a whole is facing a deep conceptual and spiritual crisis, in my opinion. The only possible way to overcome this crisis is ethics in science. I mean, the common good, the good 
for our planet and all the kingdoms that it habits. Ethics in the sense of responsible and correct relationship. So we move away from this common good or right relationship when science work for a small goal for the benefit of few, bettering through and above all ethics. I believe that every scientific paradigm arises from the beliefs that dominate the mind of the scientist and the society to which he belongs. So, to renew the scientific word, first of all, the man of science must change their beliefs and open their mind for a new vision of the universe and especially the mankind. Uh, we should consider that the human being is not only a biological entity, but also a spiritual one that is interconnected with all kingdoms and dimensions not perceived yet by our macroscopic senses. New science is aware that the foundation of life are not power a competition, but communication and cooperation. And cooperation only works if it is based on the truth in sense of ethics, what we were telling before. And then in conclusion, I would like to add any isolation leads to loss of balance in humanity physiology, in human physiology. And disease can appear just as any cultural, economic, or political isolation can lead to war, what we are assisting right now. This is exactly effect of vision of isolation. It's, it's fascinating, Leili, what you share with us, because we have chosen this topic of science in the astrological sign of Aquarius. And Aquarius invites us to unite the heart and the mind and, and to bring our desire for analysis and understanding and information, but to unite it together with that circulatory function of the heart and the love that the heart brings forward. And I hear that in, in how you're describing science, but I also imagine it to have been a little more present in some of the previous, I'm going to say scientists, the people like Leonardo da Vinci, although very mathematical, one imagines that there was a lot of passion and life and heartfulness Absolutely. in in his work but i may be mistaken no no it is it is exactly so but you know in the last era that was uh, uh, a person mm. a heroic person was appearing and doing that mm. but today what i feel really is society is pushed to change their mind and the vision of the world uh, I don't think they're going to existing again a person. We must think about the group vision. But when I talk about the group, I'm not talking only about humanity. This process which we are living, it's not only for humanity, it's for the planet. But who must change his mind and beliefs is exactly humanity, and especially in science. Because in last 200 years, what I was telling for me is amazing to see, yeah, we had a lot of developing, a lot of new things, but always sep with the separation, even the branches of the science. And this is a pity 
because there is no communication between different branches. And that means no communication, so no cooperation, no un- un- united vision. Mm. And that's a really pity. It's mm. I think it is end of the time. And exactly under Aquarius and under the, the pressure of new era is coming, it's time to come together. Yeah. Yes, and we're seeing this this theme of um, group and group consciousness come much more to the fore. And in many of the wisdom texts, the the ancient wisdom texts, we see that the the group of scientific servants has the task of revealing the essential spirituality of all scientific work. And and I think I hear you speaking of that spirituality, not not just as a um as as religious beliefs but as a as a fundamental expression of who we are as living beings we human animal uh, plant or or mineral but that that science of the future would be motivated by love for humanity and its well-being which is what i hear you talking about but it seems to also link science to religion and revealing that the glory of god if we can use that word universally through tangible world and through the tangible world and tangible works. So when you look at science in the future, do you imagine that we can see a resolution of the ancient conflict between science and religion? Um, will we see the mind and the heart coming together and these ethics towards the greater good that you're speaking of? Will we see that come through in a, a, an improved communication, a pu- improved relationship? between science and religion? Oh, dear Lauren, thank you very much for this question. It's lovely because, you know, actually many independent scientists around the world are working in that, exactly in that direction. In fact, we are talking about frontier science when you talk about this situation. In the last century, we are witnessing, all of us, two antithetical currents of science. One, on the one hand, we find the academic science as victim of an obsolete and separative and materialistic vision. On the other hand, with the advent of the quantum vision, we can see the birth of a new current of science that begins to re-examine the reality from new perspective by not isolating the object it studies from the whole universe. Science cannot deal with humanity unless, unless it includes other kingdoms and the planet as a whole. And we know the true incorporates many aspects and scales of life. In the quantum age, which we are living right now, science is called to create a synthesis between various branches of science. It means, for example, linking physics to medicine. We are doing right now this geology to archaeology. So the vision of the age is going to change. And why not? (laughs) Absolutely, we must consider to link quantum physics to cosmology. You see, they seem actually really far, but they are not. They have really the linking point which we are invited to to take part and study it. This new attitude leads to an expansion of the meaning of life as a cosmic process and finally discovers the study of consciousness as an essential part of science obviously not deviating from the scientific method. This is really important. And exactly here, ethics become the fundamental part of scientific method. Scientific language 
has always made it possible to overcome linguistic, religious, or political barriers so that it becomes an instrument of peace and dialogue between peoples and between the different forms of life that populate our planet. This allows us to go even beyond the pla plans of existence to which we are aware today. Here is the connection, create communication between many, many scales of being. For me, it is an obvious bridge between religion and science. So they are not going to be two different things, but they become one. And they were always one, in my opinion. The problem was the limitation of the mind of scientists and human beings. This, this uh, I'm, I'm smiling. I know our, our listeners can't see that, but I'm smiling because as you, as you speak, I'm getting a very clear sense of um, a web, a network, uh, a, a series of uh, filaments that are interconnected yeah. at all levels. And um, yes, you know, that can feel a bit overwhelming, I think, sometimes to think, well, we have to connect so many dots. And yet, right at the center of that is that unity, that that sense of oneness that some people might call God, other people call life, other people give it other names, but that sense that when we really, really stop and look into our heart, we know that we are all connected okay. and that all things are connected and therefore um, allowing that communication flow between um, not just science and religion, but science and all departments of human life and science within itself strikes me as a, a really, really important mm -hmm. Part and of... you know, it is not important how you call it, no, but how you are in, how you are connected with this sense of life. And then, exactly then, you can act in that direction. Yeah. And that division, which we call uh, isolation, we call before isolation, create only, only difficulty. Mm -hmm. It's it's not pro life, mm. absolutely. It's not pro life, <laughs> and we see, uh, you know, in in some of the most difficult ways. But we've been seeing so much more of that illustrated in these last few years, haven't we? Of that connection, that point of of uh, similarity and interdependence uh, between not just members of humanity but our relationship with the planet our relationship with with all kingdoms it's very much at the forefront um what we don't necessarily fully understand is how we get to play our part in that and and so i want to bring us to to something that might be useful to our listeners in in a more everyday sense and i'm wondering whether you have some thoughts about how how each of us can collaborate more to bring this field of service of, of the new science of science um, into our everyday lives, even if, like me, you know, I don't consider myself a scientist, but um, you've already illustrated that that's not needed. We're all scientists at, at some level. But how can how can I bring this into my life more practically? What can people do that might feel more accessible to them in this space? I love this question because, you know, when we talk about science, many people tell us, ah, that's not me. So let me stop to, to here. But perhaps not many of us can define ourselves as scientists, but we are all researchers. This attitude belongs to every human being in whatever field he deals with. So it is really important this, really important. So research built by love for the truth consecrates us 
to be a server, the one who dedicates his daily life to the good, to the beauty, and to the truth. I'm really experienced. Research is a heroic enterprise in which one must believe and apply oneself with tenacity. Absolutely. For being researchers, we must develop the ability to get out of a limited vision of ourselves at first, and then limited vision of life, because we think life means biological life. No, we must really change our mind about this, because even the computer, when we are working on with that, is a life. They answer to you. And keep in mind that without research, there is no development and progress. Where progress does not mean only technological development. I'm, I'm exactly talking also about the effects that the tension toward research creates in our organism in particular in our brain. I'm talking about physical brain. Neuroscience evidences that research tension, especially if it is driven but by common good and truth, increases interconnections of the neocortex developing our cognitive abilities that become more and more broad and refined. One of the immediate effects we can observe is the expansion of telepathic abilities. And this is exactly a reflection of these connections which we are telling. Here, scientific research help to develop these skills both horizontally and vertically, means telepathy with its own spiritual aspect. And that means naturally in everyday life, greater insights and allow us to access to the cosmic consciousness naturally through our spiritual being. Could you imagine each person become a channel of communication with the knowledge pool? It is cosmic knowledge pool. Does the researcher becomes a bridge between man and the spiritual world to which we belong? and we need to be connected. I'm talking in this point as a doctor. This is a need. Again, I'm I'm um inspired by by what you share, Laili. And and this as you were speaking, what I was sensing is the level of passion and enthusiasm and energy that you bring to the subject of being a researcher and that the curiosity that we, if we can allow ourselves to step into that space of curiosity and seeking information, insights, understanding, that we vitalize our own life, but we also vitalize the lives of others as well. So again, I'm hearing that very powerful connection between the head and the heart coming alive through this practice of research, which is wonderful, really exciting. Now you feel yourself a little bit more researcher. <laughs> now you I are. Feel my, <laughs> I feel I can identify a little more now with this notion of being a scientist, but as but a researcher. This is lovely. This yes. is lovely. This yes. is this started. You know, we must just recognize ourselves and permit to allow 
ourselves to be. Yes. Yeah. When the people tell me, oh, no, you know, you are not, I'm not religious. I don't know, go to Moscow or, or, or church. All of us, we are religious. Mm. All of us. All of us, we are researchers. Mm. Otherwise, no sense to live, in my opinion. Yes. Well, and actually that, um, in my experience, you, you when you see people who have retreated from life in many respects, then you see, you can actually visually see um, life force dry, draining away from them in many respects because they've, they've stopped being uh, curious, they've stopped engaging with the, the process of life and, and wanting to know more about this fabulous experience, even if it doesn't always feel that way every day, but but it is a miracle that we are living and, and part of. Um, I mean, we ask this of every every person who comes to join us in in these podcasts, and and um, I'm not sure this is easy to come to a summary about, but. But I wonder if you have a thought, Laylee, that you could share with us that's a sort of one sentence summary or a, a thought form or an idea that would uh, that our listeners can take away as as something that they can just connect into on a daily basis yeah. if they want to develop themselves a little more in this field what 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 would you say to those who are listening oh my god i can just uh, just um, spread an aqua aquarian projection the kind of tell I I really believe and what I really love to tell to remember to each of us humanity is not isolated but is an integral part of cosmic life not planetary cosmic life this is a scientifically proven fact I hope that one day this vision will be brought into economics and politics, but also into the medicine and school education. Then living in a peaceful relationship between nations, between humanity and other kingdoms, will no longer be wishful thinking, but become reality. This is what really I wish. What a beautiful wish. Thank you. And and such a beautiful way to um, end our short chat, because I, I know there is so much more that could be said. But um, I'm sure our listeners will take something very powerful from what you shared with us today, Laili. And, and um, I can only thank you again for taking the time out. And as we were saying before we started recording, to step into your own courage, to share your thoughts in a language that's not your native language. So thank you for doing that as well. Which uh, <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Really I, I try just uh, compensate my difficulty in language with the love which I, I really apply myself to the research. So I hope could be useful this for understanding it, it shines through it shines through so thank you again and you. Uh, i hope we can invite you back again at some point in the future but for now Laylee, thank you so much for being with us thank you this podcast was offered by the community of living ethics umbria italy and freely inspired by Aldebaran, the community's astrosophy group, and by our research on service.